Well, hello there. So today we are going to continue our look at the node voltage method or node analysis and do some examples in this video. So remember, it's a roughly three-step procedure. The first step is setting up all of the unknowns, defining them, labeling them. Then for each unknown node voltage, we use Kirchhoff's current law, KCL, and write that equation for the node. Then we combine that equation with, with Ohm's law. And we have this little template here as a cheat sheet on how they look so that we get one equation for each node with an unknown voltage. Then we solve the set of equations. Okay, so here's our first example in this lecture. It's the circuit. We've got a voltage source. We've got a current source. We've got several resistors. And so the first thing is to take a look at it and identify all of the nodes and make a ground node and if there are any easy ones, we can take care of them. So here we've got a node at the bottom, and we're calling that the ground node. There's a node here where the voltage source connects, and that voltage is going to be at V0. So that's known, so we, we can skip that node because we don't need to solve for its voltage since it's already known. So that's where the voltage source sometimes makes our lives easier. It's connected to ground. That's when it makes it easier. This is a node here on the corner. That's an ordinary node, and so uh, which means there's just two resistors in series here. So uh, the way the book approaches this is we, we skip this voltage also and we combine R2 and R3 into an equivalent resistance, as we'll see. So here's our first extraordinary node with an unknown voltage. So that's node 1. Node 2 here has got a current source coming into it. Node 3 has got the current source coming out of it. And, and then we've, we've finished. So we have three extraordinary nodes with unknown voltages. And so we'll have to write three equations based on those. So for each one, we've labeled the currents. And we just label three the currents on every branch and label them going out. For now. So even here where we have our current source coming in, we've put I5. The other thing to notice is that we have a branch here with R4, and we've labeled current I3 going one way and I4 going the other way. So clearly one of those is in the wrong direction because the current has to move the same way through that element. So you could just use I3 for the V1 node and the V2 node. Um, but then it's coming in, and so to keep things simple, our book recommends just renaming and making a new current. We're going to get rid of these currents with Ohm's law right after we do Kirchhoff's current law, so they go away really quickly. So here we have I3, which is the same as negative I4. Also I5 and I9 are in opposite directions in the same branch, and they're going to get replaced by I0 here anyway. So, um, so we just draw arrows going out of everything to be consistent. Okay, so now we're going to look at node 1, and we'll go node by node. So first is Kirchhoff's current law, so all the little blue arrows, they're all going out, so all the currents going out equals nothing coming in, so that's our basic current law. And then we do Ohm's law. This is where the class would say, I'd say, whose law is next? And you can do it with me. Ohm. There we go. So uh, we have I1, and this is the tail voltage minus the head voltage divided by R, remember, is our Ohm's law. So I1 is coming down, so the tail voltage is always going to be V1 minus 0, because the ground node is at 0 volts, divided by R1. For I2, here we have these two resistors in series, so we, you could have a different unknown here, and, and you could treat that as an unknown in your system if, you, if this is a, one that you particularly care about. But it's a little simpler to do this. So we do I2 minus all the way down over here, V0, that's the head of this arrow, divided by the equivalent resistor R2 plus R3. So that's I2. So you might take a second step and write I2 equals this, I1 equals this, and I3, tail voltage, minus head voltage is over here at V2, V1 minus V2, divided by R4. 
So you see the pattern, if all of our currents are going out, then it's always V1 minus the voltage that we're connected to divided by the resistance that connects them. So this is our Kirchhoff's law and Ohm's law in combination. And so you can jump right to this bottom equation uh, with some practice. It's not a bad way to go. So again, we're doing the same thing now at node 2. So we're summing up all of the currents for Kirchhoff's current law. So I4 plus I5 plus I6 equals 0. Here we have a current source. So we can use this. Uh, we, this is a known current. So I5 and I9 will be known. So I5 is the opposite direction of I0. So we'll put negative I0 in for I5. And we don't do Ohm's law on a current source because it's not a resistor. So that's known, so it actually makes our life easier. So I4 we do Ohm's law on, tail voltage is V2, minus head voltage is V1, divided by the resistor in between, V2 minus V1 for R4. Here's our I0 comes down, and then I6, tail voltage V2, minus head voltage V3, divided by the resistor in between R6. So that is the combination of Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's current law that gives us the equation for node 2. Our last node with an unknown voltage is the V3 node. So again, Kirchhoff's current law, I7 plus I8 plus I9. Then we have a current source for I9. They're going in the same direction, so I9 equals I0. And that's known, that's like 3 amps or 2 amps or whatever they tell us in the problem. And then I7 we get from Ohm's law. It's coming down, so the tail voltage is V3, head voltage is 0, V3 minus 0 over R5. And uh, I8 is coming this way, so tail voltage is V3, head voltage minus V2 over R6, and I0. So this bottom equation is our third equation in our system. And we've done all of the nodes. So these are our three equations and three unknowns. The unknown voltages are V1, V2, and V3. And we have three equations from node 1, node 2, and node 3. So it's a nice system, constant coefficients. So you can solve this in a few different ways. When we do these, uh, analytic problems without numbers. Students really like numbers, and I appreciate that. Um, the assumption normally is we know what all the components are that we would buy to build the circuit. So if we look back here, we have to buy resistors for R1, R2, R3, R4. So we should know the resistances. We're buying a current source, and it's going to be a 2 amp or something. So we know what I0 is because we had to go to Radio Shack and buy it. And the same thing with the voltage source, V0 should be known because we had to choose our voltage source. So the things that are unknown are the voltages at the other nodes and everything else um, is known in these equations. So all the resistors are known um, and the V0 and I0 values are known. So to solve this, we gather up all of the coefficients, so we group all of the V1 co uh, coefficients and the V2 coefficients, and then all of the known things go on the right-hand side. So V0 is known, and the R2 and R3 are known. So we're just rearranging. This is the node 1 equation and the node 2 equation and the node 3 equation, and we're trying to get it into this matrix format so that we have coefficients the V1 coefficients, the V2 coefficients, and the V3 coefficients, and a right-hand side vector. Once we have those, we can put them in MATLAB. It's probably the best thing for, um, for our online format class. Your uh, graphing calculators normally will solve this kind of system of equation as well. Um, you can use other techniques, too, if you want to do it by hand, like Kramer's rule. So I'm going to skip over that. Our book has a nice appendix on how to solve this in MATLAB, so if you need a review on that, hopefully you saw that in our programming class. Um, but it's, it's a good way to go. We don't have any numbers, so we can't get us answers for this problem. Okay, so just a little talk about what happens when we're done. So the 
Node analysis gives us node voltages. Sometimes you want other things. You want power, you want current, um, you want voltages at the nodes that you skipped over the, the non-extraordinary nodes. Um, so that's post-processing. Once we're done with the system of equations, we know all the node voltages, then we can go back and we can find the currents using Ohm's law, just like we did when we did KCL. We actually solved for all the currents using the voltages. So once we know the voltages, we can go back and use those to find the currents using the equations we've already used. If we had ordinary nodes, like that node between the two resistors in this last example, if we need its voltage, we can use the current through that branch and Ohm's law to find it there. The current going in and out of that branch should be the same. Um, and then power, voltage times current. So once you know the voltage and the current, you can calculate power. Power is, there's no one power, it's usually power of each element that we're solving for. So the power absorbed by a resistor or supplied by a voltage source or current source. So here's an example where we do a little bit of node analysis and some post-processing. So this one we're using node analysis to find current Ix and the amount of power supplied by the voltage source, this 40 volt voltage source in the figure. So it's not actually asking for any of the node voltages, which is what we solve for, but we'll do node analysis first and then dig into the actual things that are asked for as a post-processing step. So node analysis, first thing, look at all the nodes and see what they are. So we've got a ground node down at the bottom. We're gonna label that as the ground node. This top right corner is 40 volts because it's connected to the 40 volt source that's connected to ground. So the voltage source making our lives easier by just giving us 40 volts up here. And then this is all one big node across the top and it's connected to a current source which doesn't help us with the voltage. So this is an unknown. So we have one unknown voltage V. We have the ground node and the 40 volt node. So we've identified all of those. That's our first step. So now for each unknown voltage, just the one, we do Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm's law. So at node V up here, we have all of the currents leaving the node equal to zero. So we have nine amps nine amps coming in, so that's negative nine going out, plus I2 as drawn here going out, plus Ix, remember this is all a big node up here, going out, plus I, that was already labeled here, also pulling out of the um, this node at the top coming out, and that's all of the branches. We, If you draw a little circle around this, we've crossed all of the wires, um, so that has to sum to zero. So once we do Kirchhoff's current law, then we can do Ohm's law. So here we're doing Ohm's law for each term. So minus 9 amps it comes down, but I2 is a resistor through a resistor, so we can do the tail voltage V minus 0 divided by 2. So we get V over 2 for I2. Ix is the same layout, so tail voltage is V, head voltage 0, so V minus 0 over 4 gives us this term for Ix, and then I, the tail voltage is over here, V, and the head voltage is our 40 volt node, so V minus 40 divided by 8 ohms is our I. So for all of the resistors, we've used Ohm's law. And that gives us one equation and we have one unknown, so we can factor them out and solve for V of 16 volts. So now we've solved the node analysis, and we have to go through and do the post-processing. So looking back at what we're asked for, we need the current Ix. So we have an equation for Ix in terms of V already from up here, V over 4 from Ix. And so we can plug in and find 4 amps. And then for the power, we need the current, I, which was labeled, and we have that one also from Ohm's law earlier. So we can find negative 3 amps for I. Power coming out of the plus side makes sense to have a negative on this I coming in. And power is voltage of the um, voltage source 
times current, so negative 120 watts. And that's our sign convention for supplying power is negative. So it all works out. So you can see we do node analysis and then any post-processing we need to find what the problem is asking for. So that's the end of these examples of the node analysis method. So remember our three steps, labeling unknown voltages, and for each unknown voltage do Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm's law for the resistors to get a set of equations that we solve to find the nodes, then we do post-processing if we need to. So the next video we will look at this last line here. We've only seen easy voltage sources so far where they're connected to ground and they get rid of an unknown. Um, so we will look at that and the supernode concept in the next video. So I will catch you in the next video.